There are several million species of living things on planet Earth. Yet out of these several million species, one species and only one out of several million have the gift of language and complex speech and everything that results from that gift. The human being. Every human being. This feature separates man from every other living species on the planet. But why? The evolution of modern human language would require both the development of the anatomical features for speech and also neurological changes in the brain to support language itself. But oddly, other species have some of these very capabilities, yet without full language ability. Other species have the ability to mimic human language, like so-called talking birds. Some apes and monkeys have even been taught rudimentary sign language and lexigrams. However, none of these species even comes close to the complexity of the thought, speech, and communication process of full language that only humans possess. Most of these species would have no abilities like these had they not come in contact first with humans, who painstakingly taught them the little that they can do. A two-year-old human child is a universe above and apart in communication and language ability than the smartest of dogs, chimps, apes, and dolphins. Language is quite the separating and inexplicable feature of the human species. Language begins with thoughts and ideas, a self-awareness. Ideas are purposely then formulated into words and sentences with exacting structures. These exacting structures then develop complex language patterns unique only to humans. This speech then brings forth writing. Writing brings forth journalizing the speech and the information. This journalizing of speech and information then creates a generational knowledge base. Generational knowledge base brings additions and changes to that knowledge base. And then there is what is called generational knowledge transference. With knowledge transference from generation to generation, comes an increase in technologies. And so monkeys still swing in trees and eat bananas because they do not have language ability and generational knowledge transfer. Humans build cities, computers, cars, planes, and space shuttles. Humans eat what they want and cook their food and build restaurants and celebrate the entire eating experience. Humans have been to the moon. A monkey has been to the top of a tree. Humans write literature, plays, books, journals, and computer programs. Humans draw pictures expressing the ideas and words within their heads with art. No other living thing does these things. Chimps sling poo. Consider the following statements of Dr. Robert Berwick, professor of computational linguistics at Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He holds appointments in MIT's Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science and the Department of Brain and Cognitive Sciences. The following quotes and journalistic observations are taken from an article entitled, MIT, No Easy Answers in Evolution of Human Language. Some researchers in recent years have speculated that mutations in a gene called FOXP2 might have played a fundamental role in the evolution of human language. That was based on research showing that the gene seems to be connected to language ability because some mutations to that gene produce specific impairments to language use. Dr. Berwick says, but the claim that the gene mutation is directly connected to the development of language is very unlikely to be right. This kind of straightforward connection is just not the way organisms are put together, he says. When it comes to something complex as language, one would be hard pressed to come up with an example less friendly to evolutionary study. He goes on to say, and the specific FOXP2 connection is based on a whole chain of events, each of which is speculative. So there's little chance of the whole story being right. Rather, language is almost certainly the result of a far more complex and subtle interplay among a variety of factors, Dr. Berwick says, and it may never be possible to connect it to a specific genetic change. Or in other words, what Dr. Berwick is saying is it may never be possible to connect the explanation of the existence of language to naturalistic evolution. 
Dr. Berwick continues. Even defining something as complicated as language in a precise way is daunting, as ongoing disputes over the significance of language experiments with apes, parrots, and dolphins have made clear. Dr. Berwick says, if you cannot define what language is, why study it from an evolutionary point of view? Ultimately, Dr. Berwick says, the important thing is to understand that language is, at bottom, something that takes place inside the human mind and is independent of any particular sound, sight, or motion. The same internal mental construction could be expressed through verbal speech, through writing, or through sign language without changing its basic nature, Berwick says. It's not about this external thing you hear, he says. It's about the representation inside your head. Ah, yes, and now we open up the debate of the origins of human consciousness, the representations inside our heads, which produce language, and only in humans, the human consciousness, another evolutionary unexplainable and conundrum, another video for another day. So it seems the more we look at the real scientific evidence around us and ask the real scientific questions that beg to be asked, it seems that evolution is more and more exposed for what it is. Largely, not totally, but largely a collection of pseudoscientific ideas and straw man arguments passed off as scientific truth. What a shame and how embarrassing. Let me repeat two of Dr. Berwick's most telling statements. One would be hard-pressed to come up with an example less friendly to evolutionary study. And, if you can't define what language is, why study it from an evolutionary point of view? I am so thankful that God gave me the language to be able to express this film in words.